Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Today, SpaceX released a docking simulator for their Dragon 2 capsule so that you can fly around the International Space Station and try to perform the docking maneuver using a clone of the user interface that they are going to have on the real Dragon. We've seen this during the DM-1 mission and we've actually seen some videos of the astronauts training. So what you've got here, just to break things down, is you've got an orientation instrument in the middle that tells you your uh, yaw angle relative to the station, your pitch and your roll. Uh, you'll also see pitch and roll rates, which are zero range to the station and your x y and z your x is your distance to the docking port your y is left and right and your z is vertical displacement uh, down here you have your translation controls i wouldn't touch those initially start by correcting the roll controls and the roll controls are here so one easy one to do is just start out by correcting your role. Now, I'm using the on-screen controls here. They're actually keyboard mappings as well, if that works well for you. Uh, I just want you to be able to see what I'm pushing here just to show you that it is possible. You can play this on a mobile phone. So once you've zeroed that out, the computer will keep it uh, in its orientation and you'll be fine. So zero out the next angle and you'll see that the roll is changing as well. So you're going to have to iterate a few times to get these things down to zero. But again, I wouldn't bother moving until you've got these down to close to zero. Uh, so the keyboard controls for the pitch and the yaw are the on the number pad, that they're eight and five for pitch, uh, four and six for uh, yaw and the Roll is actually on the keyboard, they're using the comma and the period or full stop keys or the less than or and greater than keys. So those are kind of not totally perfectly located, but once you've got it dialed in, you know, you don't need to touch these things. Um, I'm going to start using the keyboard now to zero these things out. So once you've got these zeroed out, you'll see what the actual orientation is relative to the station. Roll should probably be the last one you change because once you've got roll dialed in, the others won't change as you do it. There you go. Bingo. So now you're going to switch to the translation controls and you can use the on-screen controls here. So the Z is high so you can start moving that downwards and my Y is high so I'm going to start moving that downwards and sure my range is long or my X. Let's start moving in. I'm going to start moving in relatively quickly because we want to do this sort of fast. Now, the keyboard controls are your standard W, A, S, D, Q, E. If you're a you know, first-person shooter player or practically any video game player, you will know these controls by heart. Uh, they're pretty easy, so I'm just going to start using them to get into position faster. In fact, we need to fly a little faster because, you know, you're going to get bored of the sound of my voice, right? Or you're going to want to try this yourself. So this is at iss-sim.spacex.com. Um, if you were this close to the space station, you might not be moving quite this fast, but this is a game, or a simulation. It's, it's virtual. It doesn't matter if I crash into the station, although it would be rather humiliating, wouldn't it? I mean, this is what they say. It's very easy to do these kind of things in a simulator, but when you've got the entire world watching you and everyone judging your performance, uh, you know, it starts to add a little bit of a you know, a bit of stress to it. So now I'm still moving in. I'm going to just cancel out, and I'm actually pushing the wrong buttons here because because in Kerbal Space Program they're also inverted. And you know, if you're trying to do things quickly, then you fall back to instinct and you start making mistakes. If you do things slowly, you will have no problem flying this. So I've got these down. I'm basically going to try and. Make, keep this in the center. I'm moving in about one meter per second, so I've got a you know couple of minutes to go during which I'm going to have to fill the time with all sorts of inane babbling, I guess, or we could play some music. So to dock, you need to get all your values below 0.2, so 0.2 meters per second approach velocity, uh, you know 0.2 pitch roll yaw. The actual international docking adapter standard has much higher tolerances for the angular displacement, but you know, you want to do it well. After all, the people on the station have all gone through this simulation and they are going to be uh, judging your progress. Um, so yeah, this is obviously in advance of the first Crew Dragon flight, which will be about two weeks from now. I am getting very excited. Are you getting excited? I'm getting excited. 
Uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to go. I had been planning, but you know, things have got in the way, unfortunately. <laughs> but it's all good. So here we go. Coming in towards the final approach. And now you should probably start slowing down. Once you get really close, you shouldn't be going... I mean, if, if I was as close as this in real life, I wouldn't be going nearly as fast. I'm going to reduce my speed down to 0 0.2 meters per second approach rate. And at this point, it's going to be kind of hard to keep it on center because the precision of the controls is not great. The thing offers two levels of precision, precise and not precise at all. I'm in the precise mode and it's still very hard to keep it on center. The Dragon Capsule has a lot of touch screens, but I believe they have actual tactile controls for this. And there we go. Success. It's almost like I'm good at this, that kind of thing. Of course, you can play it like a game. You can try to see how quickly you can dock. After all, uh, there's no space station traffic controls here. If you're going to try and dock fast, you're going to have to learn to combine your uh, rotation correction and your translation correction so that as you're flying towards the station, you're trying to get all your angles lined up. But with a bit of practice, you can get your docking time down to under two minutes, and I'm betting I can get this down to under a minute. And you know, actually docking fast means you don't have to worry about the whole orbital mechanics thing. If you look in the menus, they actually have options to you know, disable gravity. And of course, there's also an option to change the Earth from its oblate spheroid version to the flat Earth version for those purists out there. And the space station is properly modelled as well. This is a model you can download from NASA, I think, but you can fly around it from any angle and take in the sights, examine the model. As far as I can see, there's no... I've not seen the sun or anything. I'm sure the sun is out there, but you don't have to worry about the sun rising and setting by the looks of things. I've just sort of sat in orbit for hours and not seen the solar panels move or anything. It's all static. But you can pick out all the modules. You can see the Columbus section, Destiny... Japanese Kibo. Um, at the back, of course, you can see the Zvezda and the Zarya. So there's no, as far as I can tell, I haven't seen any other spacecraft docked to the station. I really wonder if they support docking to any of the other ports. Uh, I should probably try that sometime because that seems you know, stupid enough for me to try it. One thing I haven't seen in the simulation is the sun. So you don't have to deal with the sun coming up over the horizon and shining in the camera or anything. But uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's just a minor thing to concern about. Also, you can't uh, deorbit the spacecraft if you fly too far away from the station. It just declares that you have failed the docking. And sure, uh, it would be really nice to have a fully fledged dragon simulator at some point. Yeah, this is me just messing around and doing some flying around the station to show that, yes, I have actually flown spaceships before and this stuff is pretty easy for me. And if you flip the spacecraft around, you will find a Tesla Roadster there floating in space. It's not a convertible. It doesn't have Starman sitting in the seat because this is obviously a completely different red Tesla Roadster. Uh, that The other Tesla Roadster is obviously in deep space heading past Mars every now and then. Um, I, I suspect, actually, that this software will probably end up on Teslas at some point. It seems to make total sense since they have all the operating system and the synergy between the companies would make it kind of cool to have a spacecraft docking interface inside a Tesla. Unfortunately, as it turns out, this Tesla is just an illusion brought on by space sickness or space dementia, I imagine, because, uh, yeah, if you get too close to it, it magically evaporates and you don't get to fly around in space in a space car, in a hot rod of the gods, as they say. So for people that have never actually tried any space flight simulators, this is a great little uh, you know, web app. It's totally free, simple to download and try, and you can play it on any device. For people that have obviously had a lot of experience with Orbiter or Kerbal Space Program, it's old news. You've done this a million times before, but it's a really interesting insight into the user interface that SpaceX is using. So something for you to do at home while you're waiting for the real thing to happen. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Thank you.